Hello everyone, um, thank you for attending today's session. So this last part I'll be looking at, actually I was just switch my um, my camera off just to keep it simple. Um, I'm going to be looking at the time use variables in the COVID-19 survey. Um, I'll go through all of those, but I'll specifically uh, look at an example, but we've done analysis um, on some of these variables and that's been in relation to parental time use during the lockdown. So, uh, first of all, just to go through what the questions in our questionnaire were. Sorry, I'm done. Keep hitting. Um, so the time use questions um, were 16 sort of individual um, activities, if you want, and we asked how many hours have you been spending doing each of the following activities on a typical weekday since the coronavirus outbreak began? And people uh, report these to the nearest uh, to the nearest hour. Um, so it's paid work, is volunteering, homeschooling of your children. Uh, it's other interactive activities with children, so reading to them, playing games with them, painting, drawing with them, and doing puzzles together. So more to capture uh, potentially activities with, with younger children not yet at school. Um, it's also caring for someone other than a child. Uh, also housework, uh, formal learning, physical activity or exercise, and other leisure activities and hobbies, TV and so on, uh, gardening. Um, and socialising with non-household members via phone, video calling and messaging, and socialising with non-household members in person, uh, travelling for work, shopping for um, shopping or essential appointments, uh, personal care, or being ill in bed, or other activity as well. Um, in addition to that, we, we do have um, we do have one more in relation to time spent outside. So that's just an additional one uh, to just to report in the 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 amount of time that's spent outside um, of your home. Because obviously during lockdown, we all advised to um, to spend as, as as little time as possible outside. Um, so just to give an overview of what this looks like across all of the cohorts. Um, so this is what this looks like. So we, we can see hours spent per day uh, for different activities. So the big chunks here really are paid work. So that's um, 4.3 hours a day. Another one is housework, three hours in housework. Other leisure activities, 5.3 hours. Uh, what else have we got there? Time spent outside, 3.7 hours. Obviously, there are still people who have to go out and work and stuff. So um, that will account for some of that. Um, we also have, for so example, small and maybe sort of smaller chunks, two hours a day on exercise, which I think is, is fairly good going in a day. Um, we also have um, other sort of sort of smaller, um, maybe smaller chunk chunks. So we have homeschooling um, and other interactive activities with children, which take up less of people's time. However, not everyone is obviously parents in this. These are all the cohorts, including the older cohorts may not have have children at home and also many of our um, millennium cohort study uh, members they wouldn't have children either because they're fairly young but despite these um, being sort of fairly sort of uh, activities the homeschooling and other activities of children taken up less time we thought they're quite interesting actually and very um, poignant um, at this time because because children do spend, uh, so children did spend a lot of time at home during lockdown. So this is what the study is going to be on. We're going to be look at parental time use during the lockdown. Um, and really the background for this was that yeah, children, the school, schools were closed and education settings and childcare institutions were closed. And children largely stayed at home over the lockdown period. We can see, actually see that from our data as well. We've got a variable on that. Um, concerns were raised over children missing out on formal education. Uh, especially those from disadvantaged backgrounds who who tend to do less well um, in education anyway. Uh, so the current study, it looks at the time that parents spent on homeschooling and other interactive activities for children during the lockdown. And um, we examine these differences based on parents' gender, educational level, and we also look at other characteristics and circumstances um, in, in regressions just to, to do some, some further checks. 
Um, in terms of novelty, what well, we think we are the first, some of the first other stu studies have on coronavirus lockdown have looked at uh, homeschooling and, and childcare, but to our knowledge, uh, we separate these out so we can actually see how much is spent on how homeschooling and how much is spent on, on these other activities. So, uh, so parents with dependent children, so these are children age um, 0 to 16, they're really concentrated in, in two cohorts. Um, so parents um, of preschool children, uh, so up to age four, these were mainly next steps parents. So we got just over 400 uh, in our sample there. So we focus on those uh, when we look at preschool children. Um, and the school, uh, parents of school age children, uh, so that's age between five and 16. These were BCS 70 parents mainly. Um, so we got about 1600 uh, parents from, from that cohort where we where we focusing um, on those activities for the older kids. And these time use questions uh, are the, the two questions that you saw on, this, on the previous slide. Um, it's, it's about how much time uh, that's spent um, homeschooling your children, if you have any, and then other activities with, with, with children. Um, in terms of analysis, we looked at prevalences and um, so, so what percentage of, pe of people actually uh, engage in these activities, um, obviously just focus on these parents, but also the, the daily hours spent, the overall uh, daily hours spent. And we looked at this by parental gender and edu educational level. Um, so just to give you results, uh, starting with homeschooling, these were the age five to 16 children uh, using our BCS 70 sample here. Um, so we got both, um, we got overall prevalence is about 58% uh, of parents reported that they um, did some sort of homeschooling. Overall time that these parents spent uh, is 2.2 hours daily. Um, then moving down to the next panel, we look at mothers and fathers. So we can see that um, there is a difference here in the prevalence. We got about 64% of mothers who said they did homeschooling versus 49% of fathers. Uh, but then also when we look at the, the actual time, daily time spent, we also see that difference uh, between mothers and fathers. Mothers spending uh, an average three hours and fathers about um, one and a half hour daily um, on this. Uh, in terms of educational uh, level, we 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 sort of binarized the variable, looked at people with um, less than a degree and people with a degree or above, and we see here for the prevalence, we see there is a difference here. We see that about sixty five percent of of the more highly educated um, people uh, said they said they had homeschooled versus about fifty percent. Um, uh, with, with with a degree, uh, so with less than a degree, uh, but overall time, daily time use was was really similar, to two point one for both of them. So uh, we don't so in overall we don't really see um, we don't see see, see a difference uh, in education there. Um, but you may think think this is quite crude. What about where could it be their mothers uh, don't don't work or could be other difference between um, you know mothers and fathers that we haven't quite. Um, sort of got to just be looking these sort of very binary uh, relationships. So let's have a look at what if we control for different things, what we control for for their um, class of region, education level, being a lone parent, uh, employed during lockdown, being a key worker, number of children and also children household. Are we still getting this this quite a big difference between uh, the this is daily hours spent? And the, the answer is yes, we are. Mothers are still spending. Um, sp spending a lot more time um, than, than fathers on this. Um, we also see here that um, being employed during lockdown um, has meant that, that people do less or um, homeschooling and also having, um, on the other hand, having primary age children in the household, so from age five to 11, um, that adds on nearly two hours extra of parents' time for homeschooling. So we see that gender still holds on here, but also we, we do also see that it does depend on, on the, the child's age. Uh, okay, so moving now on to um, this other time variable, time use variable, which is other interactive activities. Um, and I'll start here with the, the children 
parents of children age zero to four, and that's our next step sample. Um, we can see that overall, quite a lot of parents, nearly all of them, 92% um, report um, spending time on these activities. And overall time use is about five and a half hours a day. Um, so quite a lot. Uh, moving to the next panel where we see uh, mothers and fathers. So the prevalence is slightly higher for mothers compared to fathers, but that's in, in, in statistical sense that there's, there's no real difference there. However, if we look at the, the, diet, the, the daily uh, hours spent, we see that is a significant difference between mothers and fathers. Mothers spend um, over six hours uh, on these activities versus fathers spending at three hours. Um, we don't see any difference in prevalence uh, for education qualification or on, on time use either. Um, so not not in um, we don't see any real differences in statistical sense there. So again, gender really jumps out here um, as being um, a huge factor. Again, I just want to show uh, you regression as well. So we, 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 we put some variables in there again just to potentially um, just to check. Well, are we still getting differences between um, the genders here? So yes, we are. We're still finding mothers spending uh, over three hours more than fathers when we control for a range of, of other factors um, in the model. Uh, now moving on to these other activities, but looking at the, the parents with, with slightly older children. Um, so this is school aged children uh, going back to the BCS 70 sample that we also used for, for homeschooling. Um, we see that overall these parents are spending 68 percent, um, so not just spending, they, 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 um, the prevalence of so the 68 percent are saying that they, they have spent time um, on these activities with the children. And overall, it's around two hours um, daily uh, spent on this. Um, between mothers and fathers, there's no real difference in the prevalence. Uh, but if, if you look at the, the time use, again, we see that mothers are spending uh, more time than fathers. So there's about an hour's difference here. Mothers spending two and a half hours and about fathers about one and a half hours. Um, for educational level, we see a difference in uh, the prevalence for those um, more educated um, tending to, um, to high proportion of those um, than um, less educated, say so that they, they spend time doing this. But again, the daily uh, time spent, uh, we don't see any virtually any difference between these two uh, educational categories. Uh, so again, gender um, becomes um, sort of the most striking um, result here. Again, uh, just putting this into an aggression, regression again, um, if we control for various other things, are we still getting a difference between um, mothers and fathers? So yes, we are finding that mothers, it's been reduced uh, slightly to about half an hour than an hour um, in, in the more raw figures, but still um, we're seeing a difference here. We also seeing again that the the age of the child um, so if is is a, is a factor. So if you have a child um, in a house, so basically if you have a primary age that's primary a, um, school age between five and eleven in the household, then you're adding on extra time, uh, nearly nearly an hour uh, using these uh, activities. So younger children uh, are sort of more hard, more uh, sort of time consuming if you want. Now, if we were to uh, summarise this across um, mothers and fathers with, diff with children of different age groups, this is what you get. And we, this is both interactive activities and also homeschooling. Um, we see that um, in, the, in the first bit of the panel here, that in, in the light blue, we see that for very young children, we see that big gender gap that mothers are spending a lot more time, about over, over three hours. Um, more than fathers. Uh, moving on to the middle panel there, which is the, um, uh, the primary school children. Uh, again, we see quite a big difference uh, between mothers and fathers. Again, it's about three hours difference between um, on time spent. And then moving on to the secondary school and the last panel, um, we see less of a gender difference. We still, it's still there, uh, but we see it, it's, it's now, it's about an hour that's, that mothers are spending um, um, 
time is spending both on schooling and other activities. Um, so that's sort of the overall um, figures. So just to summarise, so analysis, um, they show the extent of time spent by parents on homeschooling. That was about 2.2 hours daily and other de developmental activities. Um, that's about five and a half hours with preschool children and about two hours with school children during the COVID lockdown period. We don't see a real difference between parents based on their educational level, but we see very, very striking parental differences um, on gender, particularly for parents of younger children um, and pre so that's preschoolers and those of primary school age, but who generally require more parental time. Uh, OK, any questions? I'll come back on. Have we got any questions? I'll put my... Thanks also. We've got a general question, which I think Alyssa is going to take. Yeah. Hi. And um, uh, so the question was about regional geographical variations and whether you can look at the data by region. So um, the answer is within the data set that we've deposited at UKDS, there is a region variable, which is, I believe, government office region. So the 12 large um, government office regions. Um, I guess there's a small caveat, which the weights aren't specifically designed so that the surveys are um, representative at the regional level or below, but broadly the weighting strategy should um, uh, should help. Um, uh, we usually, in terms of other, um, we usually release our uh, local authority identifiers under more secure conditions for our main survey um, sweeps, but we haven't done that for the COVID data sets. Um, what we have been doing is matching in uh, geo relevant data at the postcode level, and we're planning to make some of that available rather than the geolocation itself. Uh, but if there's any further questions on that, then um, I'm happy to take them. Any other question in relation to time use? I've just spotted a second bit to Gillian Bryant's question. Hello, did the surveys cover only England? So the, each of the surveys um, had a different sampling strategy at the outset, uh, but essentially the three older cohorts, NSHD, NCDS and BCS70 are uh, Great Britain. Um, next steps covers England because it was originally a longitudinal study of young people in England that was run by the DfE um, and uh, MCS is UK wide. OK, so if we don't have um, any more question in relation to the time use, I will just move on just to sort of close this thing off. So, so what's next? Well, Alyssa's already mentioned that um, we've got wave two uh, sort of about to go out. Um, uh, it's mainly a repeat of questions from wave one. Um, there's a focus on parents here. So we have details of each child in the household and the child's school, um, schooling last term, parental assessment of the child's progress in learning and mental health and also uh, items on a return to school this term. We also have improved questions on access to healthcare and questions on life events um, uh, in the year before the lockdown and since the lockdown. So there's, there's continuity, to it, but there's also uh, a little bit of change there. Uh, anything you want to add, Alyssa, here that, that you no. covered some? Yeah. OK, so that's the uh, and that, that that data will be available. It's, it hasn't gone into the field yet. It will be available uh, late um, late this year. Uh, also, just to flag some resources, uh, the data, I think we've covered this already. It's available now through the UK Data Archive. Uh, there's a link there and we can stick that into the chat as well. Um, and we also have details of the night um, the COVID-19 survey and the initial findings. So these are available from our, our website, the Centre for Longitudinal Studies website. There's some links there as well, and I'll, I'll paste these in um, to the chat there. So you can find stuff about the surveys, a few further details and also findings. So these are not the only, uh, what we've gone through today are not the only um, 
sort of areas that have been investigated has been we, we've looked into a range more and we um we put them on a website and they keep being updated so do check out our different sort of topics if you want we've got one on health inequalities as well um that we're doing and um, we've got preprint out and 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 things so there's quite a few other um other topic areas there so we've just given just given some examples uh, today and, also we, uh, we do have a couple of uh yeah. questions okay. Uh, okay, let's see. What does it say? Uh, will it be possible to explore the data through Nestar, uh, for example, within UK DRs, rather than downloading the data in the same way as we can for previous ways of these surveys? I really don't know about that one. I've I just normally download it through through the. Do you know anything about this, Alyssa, or anyone else? Um. Hello. I'm happy to pick up on I'm happy to pick up on some of these general questions. The one about Nestor is a very good one, and I'm actually not sure. So um, I know just exactly as you said here that usually there's a metadata kind of service that UKDS provide for all of its um, data, all of the the uh, micro data which it um, deposits. You routinely you can also search it with Nestar. So I, I guess so, but I don't know for sure. Um, I'm, I'm sorry about that. Um, maybe um, uh, ha have a look and try and if there's any issues arising and you'd like us to do something about it, then please let, let me know. Um, should I go? Uh, Richard, do you want me to go through some of the um, some of the other general questions that I can see up here? Yes, please. That, yeah. Is that OK? So there's a general question, which is what is the best way to merge the COVID-19 survey with previous cohort surveys? So um, that's a good question because obviously the longitudinal, the power of the survey is in its is, um, longitudinal value as much as its cross-sectional one. Uh, so in the data set that's currently at UKDS, as I mentioned at the beginning, that's currently the four CLS surveys. Um, and it's available on end user license and there is the standard individual research ID contained within that. So um, you can then directly with the other data sets that are also available on the same studies at UKDS merge using that research ID. So I'm PI of the NCDS and it's the, you would use the NCDS ID, for example, to do that. Uh, we have been producing some um, code which uh, which demonstrates how to merge the data in with um, a few longitudinal variables which have been constructed and, and we are hoping to deposit that code so that people can use it but it's not available yet we're basically working on it um, so uh, watch this space uh, I hope we'll be doing more of that kind of thing in the future as well uh, so uh, ethnicity. So there is, there is, um, as Pravitha briefly mentioned, an ethnicity variable. Uh, oh no, hang on. Ethnicity comes from previous sweeps, doesn't it? Is that right, Richard? So that would it, we didn't. So there are certain key characteristics that we essentially recollected at the point of the COVID survey, so that it's available cross-sectionally. For example, gender, but. Uh, we did not recollect ethnicity. So in order to do ethnicity analysis, one needs to merge in that identifier from the previous sweeps of each of the studies. Currently, in that code that I mentioned that we hope to be able to make available, things like that could, you could use that code to do that for you. Um, is that right? Did you, would you want to add anything to that, Richard? Was that? Um, no, I think that that's that's correct. That would okay. be the approach you'd have to take. Uh, what mental health measures will you have for the child at wave two? Is there continuity from wave one? OK, so um, at wave one, we uh, asked individual study members about uh, we asked individual study members that sim the symptoms that they were experiencing, so their own mental health. But we did not ask parents of children anything about the mental health of their children. So wave two, we will be doing that. Um, and the, but there's not continuity from wave one in the sense that we didn't ask those questions at wave one. Uh, so but for each parent, essentially, they'll answer questions about each of their children if they have multiple children. 
and um, we'll be posting details of the questionnaire so you'll be able to see what questions they are soon but it's um, it's not we're not asking a whole symptom scale of each parent about each child because there wasn't time so they're fairly basic is there anything else where i may have scrolled down Sorry, I was trying to paste in a link to our resource and I managed to paste in a massive uh, thing on there. Just apologise for that. Uh, so there's a link to, uh, to something. I think that might be it on the questions in the chat bar. Maybe if there's any others now is a good time to quickly write them down. <laughs> Richard Steele, did you want to say anything in closing? I think you've you've put in the chat bar that we'd hope people would quick fill out a quick evaluation form. Yes, so that, that'd be my we'd like to see from future training. I don't know if that was one of our questions in the evaluation, but is that do we ask people about things they would like to know about Richard? Um, in there, there, we do ask them about uh, this training and um, yeah, we'd be keen to hear their thoughts about what what they would like from future sessions that we offer we we are looking at possibly doing another one of these sessions in the autumn so uh, it would be great to get some ideas on content thanks okay well thank you very very much everybody for joining us we really appreciate it we hope that you'll um get busy with the data and if there are questions arising so richard what is the best way for people to contact us with general queries could you paste into the um i think you'd mentioned something about an email address at the beginning richard but could you paste if there are follow-up questions yes i'll paste that email address in. Should... okay brilliant so thanks everyone it's nice to see you thanks to my cls colleagues as well thank you thanks all